just to start off, I'm Pamod Sylvester. I'm from the Solutions Architecture team of WSO2. And today we are going to talk about innovation. So innovation in general, you have a general idea of its importance. So we are going to start off with the stages of innovation. And then we'll explain how APIs can be the fundamental building blocks for a successful business. And then followingly, we'll discuss a few challenges and then some of the technologies which are available to address those challenges. And then finally, we'll discuss some of the trends available so that you as an organization could inherit. So to begin with, just imagine back in the day, if you walk onto the road, almost all the vehicles you may have come across were powered by fuel. But now you will see a rapid increase of electric vehicles, which are now driving the vehicle industry. Now, what brought about this change? So let's deep dive into this and see what type of stages that this went through in order to get to this product. So brainstorming phase, which means when the fuel powered vehicle was available, the experts collected all the data that is necessary. It could have been safety, security, environmental factors. So one of the factors that really motivated the experts to brainstorm for an electric design was the environmental factor, which basically meant that the fuel powered vehicle had an adverse effect on the environment because of its carbon footprint. But EV equivalent of it can provide that same facilities to the consumers while being environmental friendly. So it is very important that you as an organization, when you have products, you are basically giving it to the consumers and having the consumer satisfaction as well as having data related to the product, as well as having a proper analytics platform to measure the product's quality is essential as well as for the experts to find the pros and cons of the product, as well as find the gaps, it will be uh, a definite must have for an organization. So when the experts brainstormed on this environmental issue, they came up with an idea Hey, look, let's go ahead with an electric design. And they built a conceptual model of an electric design. So just imagine when you have an idea, just materializing it overnight could mean two things. One is it can be nearly impossible. The other thing is what about the feasibility of it? So definitely you as an organization would need some background in order to develop a prototype and get early feedback from the consumers because the fact about innovation is this idea can work or cannot. But if you do not invest all the resources on it, and if you can strategize on a mechanism to get early feedback, that will be helpful for you to fail fast and then iteratively come up with a new solution and go ahead with it. So there needs to be a prototyping environment which allows the stakeholders to give you early feedback before you invest all your resources into the design. And then comes the materialization phase, which means just imagine uh, you having all the building blocks together and having to tie it and doing all by yourself, right? So when it comes to the materialization stage, you have to be quick because know that your adversaries, your competitors are also thinking about innovating and come on, coming up with something new. So in order to be quick, you need to have everything in place to make the materialization process more efficient. And then when you introduce this product into the market, there needs to be a way for your stakeholders to come and identify your products. Or if you had a previous version of these vehicles or any of the products that you are having in your organization, there should be a way for these consumers to upgrade that as well as they should know how to use this product. And then you need to generate revenue out of this product. So it should seamlessly integrate with the relevant payment engines. So likewise, you need this whole uh, ecosystem running within your organization. So let's see what Harvard Business Review has to say about innovation. As it's illustrated here in the slides, more than 52% of the Fortune 500 companies out of the 2000 could not exist because of digital disruption or they fail to innovate. So one of the best examples I can bring is just imagine Blockbuster. So back in the day, Blockbuster used to be one of the biggest video industries in the world. 
and in 2010 they declared bankruptcy why because its adversary netflix introduced an online video streaming platform or, or rather an api driven video streaming platform which provided better experience to the consumer so you need to understand the consumer market you need to be fast and you need to make sure that you make the consumers happy and netflix was able to do that so that really revealed these points on importance of the innovation as well as you as an organization should be thinking of transforming your elements uh, in digital and then the other part of the story is when netflix came up with that video streaming platform blockbuster even tried to match with netflix and introduce uh, introduce an equivalent but still blockbuster could not capture the market of netflix because netflix maintained continuity with their innovation cycle they started to add more new things more frequently which made it almost impossible for blockbuster to capture that market so in order to preserve that position position you have to be quick to introduce your solution to the market as well as you need to maintain continuity now this whole story is also being backed by mckinsey's report where it clearly says that more than 80 percent of your stakeholders or your decision makers now prefer to interact with your organization remotely and in akamai research it also reveals that more than 83 percent of the hits that they have seen are api driven so this reveals the importance of apis and having an api driven ecosystem within your organization so just imagine in terms of monetary value all these giants explained in the slide expedia ebay salesforce stripe almost all of them generate more than 50 percent of their revenue through apis so just imagine apis as products your next generation products are going to generate more than 50 percent of revenue so now it's time for us to again revisit that cycle and see how an api driven ecosystem would fit in so for the brainstorming phase as explained earlier now apis are going to be your next product which means you need a platform to capture all the information that flows through the apis who are your users and you need a platform your experts need a platform to articulate all that information visually and take decisions regarding the evolution of the api because that, those factors will really matter for the experts to come up with that decision on the evolution of these products that you are having and then as you also heard from the previous sessions api led approach is now becoming more and more popular because it's more consumer centric because you are selling these products to the consumer and you need to understand that consumer and then having a prototype environment will help you get early feedback from these consumers you start from the api design first instead of facading your entire data system or your entire system as it is to the consumer instead of that you go in the reverse order you first identify what the consumer wants design that api and then get your internal systems to work and then as explained earlier you have the materialization phase which means you need to stitch all these components together to get this whole orchestration to work or get your innovation to work so when you are doing that if you are to build everything on your own that can be really time consuming becoming the quick or the first to put it into the market plays a vital role here as well and then the marketplace so once you have these products in place you need to be able to advertise your apis or your products into a store where your stakeholders should be able to find and subscribe and this store should basically integrate seamlessly with the relevant payment engines in order for you to generate revenue so you need all of those things in place now what are the challenges of this system or other concerns right the research has found out that 65 percent of the modern users wants personalized experience so we'll be explaining this point in detail in the coming up session but just be mindful that modern users are very selective and you need to basically one size fits for all methodology does not work anymore you need to 
have a system that works for the user's expectations. And then also a 2018 report indicates the time it takes to develop those APIs. So more than 20% of the APIs takes more than three months, which is going to be really time consuming. Your, consu your uh, competition can outrun you. So that's why you need a platform which supports accelerated development. And then you also need to be mindful that when your consumers evaluate you, after doing a couple of rounds of evaluation, they will evaluate you as well as your competitors. And if they encounter more than five issues in your solution, then they are going to leave this solution, right? They are going to drop this product. So maintaining that robustness and quality is also very important. So let's see what are the tools and technologies available, right? This is like the strategy behind our API, WSO2 API management product, which provides all these uh, capabilities. So just illustrating from that, you need a platform that can collect all the metrics, matrices and visualize them. So those matrices in the context of APIs will be API usage, response times and backend latency. So all these attributes will allow your internal API developers to see where you can improve. Like let's say if the latency is too high, you need to narrow down that time because consumers will not like idling screens or frozen screens. Then you will understand that you need to improve that point and then different geographical information. Like even in business wise, just imagine you knowing which region has the highest traction towards a given API, then you know where you need to do the marketing on the next region because you know what regions doesn't have a trend so that you can address those regions separately. So likewise, these stats are very important as well as APIs are being invoked through an application. So uh, having uh, statistics related to the applications and its subscriptions will also be very important for you as an organization to have in place in order for that brainstorming to work efficiently. And as I explained, API-led approach is now one of the most popular out there. So when you have a platform in place, it should support early design. That means API-led design where you can define the particular APIs and how it should work with by mocking those endpoints instead of investing heavily on getting your internal system to work for a given design, you can first introduce your API model and then you should be able to publish it as a prototype so that your developers or, or rather your stakeholders can try out those APIs using the tryout platform and then give you early feedback so that instead of uh, investing all the resources and finding out that it doesn't work, you get to identify any bottlenecks with the initial idea you have early and then you can revisit it. And then when it comes to the implementation, uh, as it was also covered in our keynote, having a low code environment will help your developers to accelerate things. Just imagine your developer having to connect to multiple types of protocols. It can be file endpoints, it can be uh, a system in Salesforce. Then they'll have to learn Salesforce separately. They'll have to learn the file system separately and then get the stitching done. So that can take a lot of time. But what if there is a graphical representation that uh, depicts that functionality where the developers are allowed to just drag and drop and mix and match between them and create that innovative application that you want. So you need a platform which can accelerate that development part, right? And then especially when it comes to development uh, and integrating between multiple systems, uh, data transformation plays a vital role as well. And if you have a visual data mapping tool that allows your developers to just simply uh, match between the attributes they wish to transform, that will also accelerate the development and make your materialization process faster. And then again, importantly, right? When you have that product, then you need to put it into the market. There should be a collaborative platform which allows you to easily uh, transition that product that you created and place it in the store, right? Where your consumers can find this particular API and they can subscribe to it. And this platform should seamlessly integrate with monetization and billing engines so that in no time you will be able to generate that whole ecosystem and you can get this business running.
So this is a, a very high level overview of how an ecosystem should look like. There should be a control plane to govern all those aspects. And then there should be a data plane that allows you to manage those runtimes as well as have connectors equipped with connectors that will easily integrate with the existing systems that supports programmability or agility, where you can easily plug in a new component as and when you want without putting a lot of effort, right? And then there should be a tooling platform that supports that problem. So now let's discuss a few trends which are out there that might be of help for you as an organization to identify uh, what things are being done out there and then adapt it uh, to your own domain. So one of those trends will be Proximus, who is one of our key customers in the telco industry, saw the advantage of API-led design. So they used a, uh, API manager to first identify ex external and internal endpoints, and they basically define a strategy where they moved away from service-oriented architecture to a resource-oriented model where all the resources, like let's say, for example, if there are internal users, the security levels you should be defining are uh, different than the external users. So giving that personalized experience was one of the objectives of Proximus. And they also made the statement, we had to rethink what we were doing and essentially look at making APIs great again. So this case study is also available in our website, which will give you an in-depth understanding of what it went on but you will get a glimpse of how you can make or transform APIs great again, because just having that signature and just having uh, a, a particular service exposing your internal systems will not be personalized, right? So giving that personalized experience is very important. And uh, even companies like Netflix have been brainstorming and they have identified like what type of personalization should a system adhere to? So for instance, Netflix, as you might know, it has many uh, devices. Like uh, if you have a mobile phone, you know that you have a Netflix app on that. You, If you have a computer, you have a Netflix app on that. And if you have a DVD player, or if you have a PlayStation engine, they all have Netflix on it. But if you identify all those devices, have different hardware configurations. They have different memory and processing power, right? So then treating all the devices the same way, like having this one size fits for all API concept does not work anymore because some devices might prefer bit streamed across HTTP over uh, returning a whole document as a response, right? So uh, in the event as such, if you create an API and if you are force all the devices to abide by your rules. And when their hardware does not support it, they will mark your application as incompatible. And if they try to support it, and if they can't give that best use experience for the end user, and when the end user sees those repercussions, like loading screens and like all types of issues, then they will eventually drop you anyhow. So that's why it's very important to understand and embrace those devices. So what uh, companies like Netflix started to do was instead of creating one API to do all of that, granular APIs were created per device and each device was embraced carefully and they identified what, what are the potentials of those devices and got the APIs to cater to that. So that way you make the user experience better. And then again, some of the devices like especially when you have consumers using different types of devices, some of the devices might act in a very constrained environment where network can be expensive for them. And if you like, usually when people used to write code those days, there was a UI side, that means client side code, as well as server side code, right? And then if you try to delegate all the work to the client, like let's say uh, the client calls about five or six, APIs within your system and stitches all those responses together. And some of the responses you might be giving to the client might be redundant or it might not be relevant. But if you give all that work to the client, then the client will be exhausted by sending a lot of network calls, right? 
and that can be expensive and it can also be a bad experience so you can use this api adapt concept where the ui the the client will be embraced by the server and a dedicated adapter api within the server will do all that aggregation like within the server itself and then respond back to the client with the final response so that way all those multiple calls can be boiled down to one which will make the client's life easier in other words consumers will prefer to use your uh, application when it's designed as such and also thinking in a regional sense now these topics will be covered in detail in the future open banking and healthcare section as you know psd2 specifications so the value of apis they basically government started to enforce rules over the regional like especially in the uk mandating all institutes to support an api driven design right in order to expose data because they saw that value that it brings uh, to other applications to create this third party like other third party vendors were able to create better experience to the consumers as a result of opening data right so when you are getting ready for a system as such because now open data is getting viral uh, banks are adapting it healthcare sector now finance energy almost all the verticals are thinking about these concepts so you need to have in mind like regular authentication at such instances might not work so at that event you might be having applications today that might only rely on uh, user credentials based on the user's knowledge like user will enter a password and then you will authenticate that user but strong concepts like strong customer authentication covers the aspect that you need to basically focus on multiple areas right and instead of just having credentials you might have to get the otp of the user or a fingerprint so likewise if you are thinking in that sense you also need to work hand in hand with full blown identity and access management servers who gives you easy access to create multi factor authentication with ready made connectors that can make the developers life easy as well as the process quick so consent management again when you are opening data and when you are providing those capabilities to the users you have to get the consent of the user as to which operations that uh, the solution or that should be returned to the third party so in that event having out of the box capability for you to be able to provide this consent is also a must in order to accelerate the development uh, process so uh, this is a summary of what you as an organization would need in order to innovate and how api platforms and integration platforms can be of help 